<laughs> Bill Schwab, Wine Buzz, the wine guy here, and I'm here with James, uh, one of the four brother owners of Chateau Palmer in the Margot region, and we've worked our way through uh, not only some of the uh, Colts Gaston properties that you own, uh, Anglade, uh, which is another property you uh, actually you represent this, you own this, Absolutely. and the family, your family owns this exclusively, and then your uh, partial owners, if you don't feel comfortable answering what percentage of Palmer you guys own? 34%. 34%. Excellent. Uh, and uh, you represent this basically for the world? Yes, we do. Correct. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and now we're moving into the Palmer uh, 98. What, uh, refresh everybody's memory on what kind of vintage 98 was. Uh, 98 was, uh, it, was uh, it wasn't uh, uh, a particularly easy summer. It was, uh, 98 and it is considered to be uh, a vintage of the viticulturalist. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was very important to manage the vineyard correctly to bring in ripe fruit because it's only with ripe fruits that we produce great wines. Right. But unlike California, um, the idea of ripe fruit is uh, physical ripeness, not so much the overripeness that you get in California. So complexity, we're probably still cruising 12.5% alcohol here. Roughly, which is totally. leads a a uh, layers of flavor. Once you get up to that 15, 16 percent California Cabernet, you have driving fruit flavors and really not much else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one is uh, let's do a little math here. Uh, we're at uh, just under uh, 20 years old, 10, 15, 15, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So. We should see some signs of age here, but I've got almost none. <laughs> um, no, it's got these very nice uh, uh, plummy mm -hmm. uh, tones to it, cigar box. Yes, uh, yes, uh, tobacco. Uh, tobacco, yeah. cedar, uh, cedar tree. Yep. Uh, um, and there's a little uh, leather uh, in there too. Yes, yeah. a little bit of leather. Uh, and uh, um, we're going from, we went the 2008 with very young, youthful flavors. We're going into far more complex mm. aromas here. Um, which is the way these great wines from Bordeaux develop in time, is that they leave, um, um, they uh, um, do away with the fresh fruit flavors and all this, this is what makes these great wines of Bordeaux so fantastic, is that you get these such complex flavors and aromas that develop with time. That's the great thing about Bordeaux, is complexity. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm so shocked at uh, people that have been drinking wine for a long time, wanting to buy these wines that are uh, fruit explosions, but just not much else. Uh, I've always said with a certain California producer, I can make one enemy or 12 friends. If I pour a shot around to 12 different people, like, wow, this is incredible. But you drink half a bottle of it, and it's too much. Uh, it's like having a 12-ounce foie gras steak. Uh, it's, just, it's just too much, too much to really enjoy. And this... This is for the long haul. We could open up bottles and bottles, and hopefully we will someday, of this, and, and consume it over a meal, and it won't get tired. It won't abuse your palate. It gives you new sensations every time you sip it, and every time I bring it to my nose, I get something new out of it. Uh, it's almost hard to define because there's so many layers and so many things going on in it. The thing is that we I almost get a raspberry out of it yeah. now, too. But you never get enough of this. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you always have an empty glass. Yes. <laughs> no, but it is. It is, and this is this. Uh, so this is the '98, and as uh, uh, it will uh, uh, continue to develop very, very uh, um, uh, favorably for the next uh, 10, 15, 20, 25 years or so. I was just uh, going to ask you how much out. time, because uh, definitely you spend a little more time with these wines than you do. I would have put another 10. 12 years on it as, as still reaching, still climbing up that peak. Still climbing. Uh, uh, so you would say another 15 years still climbing up the I would peak? Say, I would say another, I would, I would say another uh, between you know, 8 to 12 years still, still climbing towards a uh, 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 pinnacle. Uh, um, but uh, uh, you know you and can those start. Are, you can those start are American, appreciating. American years too, not like the English years. That'd be more like twenty twenty five. Yeah, well, yeah. Things things are changing even there. But uh, uh, but uh, it really is uh, uh, what what I really recommend, whether for Andrade or Palmer, is to really decant these wines uh, before you 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 drink them. And I would say. 
uh, there are several ways of uh, uh, decanting. Is is first in most cellars, bottles are lying down, so you want to take the bottle out of the cellar and stand it for 20 to 48 hours. So all the sediment really sinks to the bottom. Then, when you decant it, if it's a young uh, vintage, uh, 2008 for instance, you decant it in a wide base decanter that will allow the wine to breathe and really, uh, uh, really develop and uh, uh, all the flavors all, uh, uh, all come out. If you uh, decide to drink an older vintage, then what you want to do, the older the vintage, the narrow base decanter you, uh, uh, you want to use. Uh, simply because what you want to, you want the wine to breathe, but you don't want to oxidize it uh, uh, too much. So then you don't want it to have too much, of, too much wine surface in contact with, uh, uh, with the air. But, whether it's young or whether it's old, uh, uh, once you have the right decanter, uh, my suggestion is to decant it three to four hours beforehand. I have tried, I am, I've tried many different ways of doing it, I have tested many different <laughs> time frames, and it's always, and it's always the same thing. Uh, you know, you open a bottle, you don't decant it early enough, uh, uh, and you get through the meal, and by the time you have about this much left in your glass, you feel, you, you feel damn, you know, damn, <laughs> it's just so good, and I'm just feeling it's really coming out now. Right. Uh, um, and so really, you must give your wines a lot of time in a decanter. It makes an enormous, enormous difference. Excellent. Uh, great little tip there. I always say this to everybody who's decanting for sediment. Try to get a little light source when you're pouring it in a decanter. Uh, never run it through a filter. Uh, never uh, run I don't even run through screens. Uh, that coffee filter idea I've seen some people do. Please, please don't filter your wine. Uh, if God wanted you to drink filtered wine, he would not have given you a liver. But uh, <laughs> other, other little tip, when you start decanting the when you start decanting the wine, you 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 you, you, you don't stop mm -hmm. until you get to the end of the bottle. So you need to have a light, a, a exactly light source under the bottle like this, so you can look through it, and you can see when when the sediment is sort of reaching the neck of the bottle. But don't sort of go up and down like that. You're that means up the that you're stirring up the sediment <laughs> and standing the bottle for two days will have not uh, helped uh, uh, very much if you go that that way. So you want to sort of start pouring it into the decanter, and you don't stop until you see through 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 the glass and the light source. It can be a torch, it can be a candle, it can be anything. But when you see the sediment sort of come up to the neck of the bottle, that's when you want to stop. Sometimes, depending on the wine, depending on the vintage, uh, you can have very little left in the bottle, or you can have a lot more left in the bottle. But that doesn't matter. Even if you have uh, more than you would want uh, left in the bottle, you can just let that rest for a little while and get back to it. Uh, because if it's that good, at the end of the meal anyway, People will be craving whether it has sediment <laughs> in it or not. People will want it anyway. So, uh, and I don't mind chewing my wine at all. Yeah. Babes, thank you very much. Uh, not only for the wine, but for the decanting tips, um, uh, especially for treating your palmer. Um, the great, great juice. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned the price here, but we're almost line pricing these two, which is incredible for us. Uh, this is two twenty-five. This is two thirty. Um, Really, it's a tremendous deal. I know we have some more deals in the works as well. Uh, I think we're going to run a special price on the Legendary 83. Fantastic. <laughs> is, uh, now, that uh, is something to pick up. Yeah, uh, the Legendary 83, which was the wine of the vintage, if I remember correctly. Yes, it was. I remember yeah. correctly. <laughs> uh, and uh, I actually had a tasting with... Um, that I did with Palmer with a 89, a 90, and 82, and 83. And the 83 was the most youthful of the lot and mm -hmm. showed tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, this was maybe four years ago, five years exactly. ago, and it was yeah. tremendous. Thank you, James. You're welcome. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you.